In this WrestleTalk news, WWE are concerned about Sami Zayn chants from the crowd. Has WWE's Hall of Fame headliner been revealed? And another WWE star left with absolutely no creative plans. So subscribe and enable notifications to Always On for daily wrestling news videos. Support WrestleTalk! We've gone on about it a fair old bit on WrestleTalk the past few months, so you might well know that we bloody love Sami Zayn, and we kind of want to see him be the one to dethrone Roman Reigns. And from the sounds of it, a large portion of the crowds at WWE shows also want to see that too. So the thing that people must have been warning WWE would happen, Sami Chance starting to bleed into Cody Rhodes' segments, has now happened. Cody's probably like, can I please catch a break? Please. Now, according to Dave Meltzer, those charts haven't fallen on deaf ears either, as he revealed on Wrestling Observer Radio that WWE was very concerned about Sammy Chance during Cody's segment on Raw this week, which is why they had Paul Heyman interrupt him so quickly. Their major worry was the chance hurting Cody's momentum going into WrestleMania 39, so they tweaked the running of the segment to limit the amount of times that fans would have to get those chants going, though I've been doing them under my breath ever since. We're going to have to see how this shakes out in the next month ahead of Mania because Sammy doesn't appear to be getting any less popular. Cody doesn't seem to appear to be getting any more Sammy. Despite this being the big topic of conversation, WWE does have some other WrestleMania plans that they need to get in place though. And one speculated is a showdown between the team of Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler against whoever the women's tag team champions happen to be at that point. Now WWE already has a huge match for the belts in place for Raw next week with Damage Control's Io Sky and Dakota Kai defending against Becky Lynch and Lita. And now WWE's event page and the arena hosting Raw, the Van Andal Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan, have quietly started advertising that Ronda Rousey will also be making appearance on Monday's Raw. So, I guess could Shayna be in tow and the pair make their challenge for the women's tag titles immediately following the conclusion of the match, or are they even going to get involved to cost the champs or the challengers before laying out their own demands? Now, I mean, Rousey hasn't been announced on any WWE social media yet, so those advertised plans could very easily change. Once again, Wait and see, we'll find out on Monday. But enough talk of Mania for now because it's not the only premium live event the WWE have planned. In fact, they have two in the works for May, according to Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics in a new Patreon exclusive video. The first is fairly obvious, WrestleMania Backlash, or the do-over, as I like to call it. Though this year, for the first time in a good while, the WrestleMania is reportedly going to be dropped from the title, so we're just getting Backlash again. Now that is all set to take place on May the 6th, but it's May 27th, which I think you might find more interesting, as according to Thurston, and WWE will be running King and Queen of the Ring, which has not been a pay-per-view ever, and King of the Ring hasn't been a pay-per-view since 2002. Coincidentally, May 27th is also Memorial Day weekend, which has largely been dominated by AEW in recent years, as it is traditionally when Double or Nothing takes place. Now, with King and Queen of the Ring, WWE will be getting their event in there a day earlier than AEW and dominating at least some of the wrestling conversation for that weekend. Sneaky. Now around this time of year, much of the focus goes rightly on the granddaddy of the all, WrestleMania, so it's quite understandable to completely kind of gloss over the other yearly WWE tradition, which is the Hall of Fame ceremony. Each year that passes sees the pool of legends not yet inducted grow ever smaller. However, there has been one name that has been set to receive his flowers and the Hall of Fame ring back in 2020, only for the pandemic to squander the plans that, of course, being the animal, Dave Batista. Now, following the cancellation of the 2020 ceremony, the following year saw the 2020 and 2021 classes merge together, but unfortunately, the six-time world champion and now hugely successful actor was unavailable to appear, later explaining on Twitter that he would be inducted at a future ceremony instead. Now, where is this WrestleMania taking place. And now, thankfully, three years on from the original plans, it seems that Big Dave will finally get his moment in the sun. It has been reported by WrestlingNews.co that Batista could be set to headline this year's class. If you can't get Dwayne, let's get Dave. This, of course, has not yet been announced by WWE. However, it is not hard to see this one coming, given the, the Hollywood thing. And, you know, he's, he's, he's a movie star. Now, along with WrestleMania and the Hall of Fame ceremony, there's yet another major event taking place, that being NXT Stand and Deliver on Saturday, April 1st. Now, if you're a keen watcher of the black and gold brand, you will have noticed the glaring absence of one formerly prominent star in recent months, and that being Cameron Grimes. Towards the end of last year, Grimes had been much touted to finally move on to a new chapter in his WWE career by leaving NXT behind for the sort of promised land 
of the main roster. However, here we are nearly in March and there has been no sign of old Grimy on Raw, SmackDown or even NXT since November. Thankfully, now it seems like we finally have an update on the situation via Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio. Now, unfortunately for fans of Grimes, Dave isn't bearing particularly good news. He said, so the deal is, is that Cameron Grimes was finishing up in NXT because he was being called to the main roster. And then right now, what's going on is that they are waiting for an idea on the main roster. So he's in limbo. He's finished with NXT. He's supposed to be on the main roster, but they don't got a story for him. So they haven't debuted him yet. And they're waiting to come up with the story for him. I guess the thing is though, with WWE's main roster being pretty darn stacked these days, it does make sense to kind of hold off in order for Grimes to just not get lost in the shuffle. However, the longer goes on, it's hard not to get a little bit concerned. I mean, hopefully all things pan out for the best and we can get Grimes. I'm tired, it's Friday to the moon soon. Yeah. Sticking with NXT, and while Grimes may be done with WWE's developmental brand, the opposite applies to Dragon Lee, who is waiting in the wings to make his much anticipated WWE debut. Lee's signing sent shockwaves through the industry in late December when he announced that he would be joining the land of sports entertainment, particularly the NXT brand. This was all particularly surprising considering it came immediately following him winning the AAA tag titles with his brother Drillistico from AEW's FTR, a kind of cross-brand inception going on there. Now, while the initial announcement caused a bit of a stir, the time has now come where we're all wondering just how and when WWE are actually going to debut Lee, and we may have just found some answers, because otherwise, why are we talking about it? It's the news. According to WRKD Wrestling via Twitter, the idea of NXT boss Shawn Michaels forcing current NXT star Grayson Waller to face off against Dragon Lee has been discussed. Waller and Michaels have had their fair share of issues lately, so this kind of would make sense, I guess. It makes a lot more sense than HBK coming out of retirement anyway, because we all know how well that went last time. Diving into some AEW news now and an update on the suspended star, Jeff Hardy. Now, Hardy has been off TV since June 2022, following his arrest for DUI charges, his third such offence in the last 10 years. Now, following a lengthy and oft delayed court case, the proceedings are now closed with a no contest plea on all three charges against Hardy being put in. And now the full sentencing against Hardy has been revealed from the Volusia County Court in Florida with credit to Fightful for the breakdown. They said Hardy has been credited for serving 38 days in jail. It is listed that he is on probation for 24 months and fined $4,000 with court costs listed at $586. His driver's license is listed as being suspended for 10 years. Part of the sentence includes vehicle impoundment for 90 days and vehicle interlock device for two years. Other provisions include attending DUI school or drug rehab program and community service. Following the arrest, Tony Khan announced that Hardy would be suspended without pay and would be mandated to have treatment and be sober before permitting any return to the company. Now that legal proceedings are done though, a return is obviously a lot more likely. However, as Khan said in his statement, it all depends on Hardy's sobriety. Staying with AEW now, and despite Kenny Omega's AEW future being in question this week with rumors suggesting WWE are extremely interested, it seems like he has his eyes set on a collab with one recent WWE departure, and that is none other than the artist formerly known as Sasha Banks, the IWGP Women's Champion, Mercedes Monet. Following a video being shared by Mercedes on Twitter, showing the moment she and the cleaner first met backstage at Wrestle Kingdom 17, Omega replied, hinting that there may be more interactions between the two to come, and even, potentially, a mixed tag team match. Omega tweeted, our work with NJPW isn't quite done yet, so I'm sure they will. I hear they sometimes do mix matches now too. With Omega and Mercedes currently holding gold in New Japan, it's not hard to imagine their paths crossing once more. Although maybe, just maybe Omega could be hinting at an AEW pairing instead. I mean, I mean, forbidden door two. And now it's finally time to check in with the always insightful and never totally overblown value of the AEW Dynamite ratings for the week. After months of coming up short in their quest to regain their elusive 1 million viewers, it turns out the answer to their prayers was laying right under their noses the entire time. That being main event, Evil Uno. Oh yeah, and Tony Khan's 
Huge announcement tease probably helped a lot as well. According to WrestleNomics, this week's Dynamite saw an overall viewership figure of 1.028 million and 454,000 in the 18 to 49 demo, landing a 0.34 rating overall. This figure saw Dynamite end up as the number one show in the demo on cable for that night, according to Showbuzz Daily. However, it must be noted that the usual stiff competition of the NBA was not present due to the league taking a break following the All-Star weekend. While AEW had hit Uno million viewers recently, recently with the January 25th episode of Dynamite headlined by Mark Briscoe's AEW debut. This week's show saw the 18 to 49 demo hit its highest figure since way back on September 21st, 2022. While Tony Khan's major announcement may have fallen a little bit flat for some, it certainly worked wonders for the magical ratings. So just keep announcing them ahead of time. And more Evil Uno in the main event, please and thank you. Hey you there! Yes, you. We at WrestleTalk are looking for additional people to help us out with some graphic design, primarily the creation of our thumbnails. A lost art, if you don't know. That's a thumbnail face. If you know how to use Photoshop and you can follow instructions as well as input some creative flair too, then email us at support at WrestleTalk.com with an application for this paid freelance role. And have a nice Friday. Go on. Treat yourself, it's there to be enjoyed. In this Wrestle Talk news, our WWE talent fearful of Vince's return to WWE creative, a shocking WWE heel turn could potentially be on the horizon, and Ollie's review of last night's AEW Dynamite. 